Hey, it's George Cow, and I'm happy to be here with Jason Stein. He is a member of my Master Heart coaching program, and he is an awesome business coach. Really great to have you here, Jason. Say hi to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, George. Yeah. So um, let me just read your bio for everybody so that uh, everyone has a context of who you are, and then we'll get into, this is going to be a natural, of course, the lessons you've learned in your business, uh, and uh, there's plenty you can share there. So um, Jason Stein has a combined 20 years of experience, over 20 years, in the fields of medicine, coaching, and training. Some of his favorite projects have included building an integrative medicine model in a Western hospital as well as teaching meditation in the workplace to corporations and also becoming the chair of professional development at the top acupuncture school in the nation. Jason loves helping coaches, therapists, and wellness providers in his private coaching practice mindfully create more business while enhancing their PRI, which is profits, relationships, and impact. It's awesome. He currently resides in Portland, Oregon, uh, although he is, has been traveling, we could talk about that a bit, um, with his wife, three children, and one on the way. Yeah. Exciting. And also his pit, uh, his pit bull, Jane, dog. Dog Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Jane the dog. Uh, so for more info, of course, you can visit his website, jasonstein.com. So welcome. Mm, Great to have you, thank you George. here for this, for this uh, conversation. So, um, I mean, this is natural for you. I ask people about their business lessons. So uh, where do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with like, why would a business coach come to George Cow? Like, <laughs> and Good question. what I want to say is that uh, I've been doing this for years and I've, I've worked with Mark Silver and his team and I've worked with other names that, that the listeners might know. And the reason that I wanted to, to work with you, George, is if you're in business, you have to continue your education. Like there's no stopping. It's just an evolution. Yes. And it doesn't mean you need to get addicted to trainings, like next training, next training, next training. But it does mean that it's really important to find mentors. And so my first business tip is really take a look at who do you resonate with in the community that's not salesy or pushy and how can you get a little bit more support within the budget that works for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, so true. And I mean, Jason, you offer uh, one on one. You also offer a, a small group mastermind. Yes. Right. Do you want to talk a bit about the small group mastermind just so people know what that is? Sure. It's great. I offer like right now I have three in play and the only one that has space is uh, acupuncturist only. Okay. And what I found is that when you can find like-minded individuals and you put them together with the background of support that you have, magic can happen. And so I put people together by, um, sometimes it's by income, sometimes it's by uh, whether they're male or female. Mm -hmm. um, and what I find is that when you have a right team, you just scale faster, way yeah. faster, right? Ah. And I love working with groups because it's not just about my resources. It's about shared resources. And totally. as you know, George, my, my taglines together is better. And yes. that means so many different things to me. But one thing it means is if you're a small business owner, stop doing it alone. It doesn't, it doesn't help you. Although it's easy to get into the mindset of everyone else is doing it better and faster, like show up, be visible and ask for help. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what, why don't we go into that since you mentioned asking for help? Yeah. Let's, let's go into that now. Um, you are, uh, a master, I think of teaching on this topic. Um, tell us more. Why is it important? How do we do it? Well, sure. I thought about this the other day because I was interviewed on another podcast and really the origin for me is that a lot of people have like a family tree and my mom was married uh, three times and my dad married four times. And so I got really acclimated to blended families. Mm. And in my early twenties, I realized I was the only family member that talked to all the other family members. Wow. And what I realized was as opposed to seeing the divorce as how painful and a curse, there's healing to do there, but it's also an opportunity of just more support and more people. Interesting. And so together is better really 
comes down to having to ask for help. Because there's a lot of people, I know your community well, George, and there's a lot of people in this community, they hate asking for help. They are so good at being generous and offering help. Yeah. But when asking for it, it just becomes painful. Mm. And normally it's because of childhood experiences where either a parental figure or an authority said, you know, it's okay to be seen a little bit, but you're asking too much, go in the corner, go away, or don't, don't bother me. And it becomes, as a business owner, a, a real crutch to be in business and not be able to ask for help. So how do we get over that, um, yeah, that, that programming, essentially? And, and um, maybe give us an example of uh, a, a nice way or graceful yeah. way to, to ask. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. So there's lots of training that can happen here. But in the little amount of time we have, mm -hmm. George, you, I watch you and you always give more than you receive. That's just a chronic thing. So <laughs> do I have your permission to just walk you through some steps? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. And so just take a moment, eyes open or eyes closed, whichever is better for you. And just like, what were you taught by parental figures about asking for help? Do you want me to, you want me to say something? I do. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think that, well, I'm the third kid. <laughs> yeah. And so by the time it got to me, uh, it was like, no, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's like, don't ask. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> we've gotten enough stuff here. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting yeah. being the third kid, you were probably asked to help a lot, but to yes. ask for you, it was like, no, right? right. Yeah. yeah, I had, yeah. To, I had right. to do stuff to be helpful, to be seen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so then when you think about asking that's a stretch for you, what do you think the biggest obstacle that gets in your way now is? Um, you know, it's funny, I, I think uh, now, <laughs> Nowadays, I think the biggest obstacle is if I ask, if I ask somebody, um, for example, like let's say I'm asking somebody to promote my course or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. My my concern is that I'm going to have to reciprocate and promote their thing. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. So and and if I if I don't fit find that that thing is a good fit for my audience and then it's awkward and. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, like you're not alone here that it becomes a tit for tat. Like yes. if I ask, I'm already in a deficit and then I'm going to owe you. So there's no paying it forward like that. We, although we believe in that, we forget Yeah. yeah. because the story of asking means if I ask, then I'm going to owe. So from that story alone, really easy not to ask because for every ask you owe. And there's no truth in that. It's just like we carry that story, right? And so now if we remove that and like the number one human need in the world is to be a contribution to other people, yeah, right? Yeah. And that means your number one need also being a contribution for other people doesn't get seen as other people being a contribution to you. So you have to realize that you're limiting people's number one human contribution to you. So if we could remove the obstacle just for this exercise and you could ask in a way that people could do it out of their generosity, just like you do, when people ask you for a favor, often you're not like, well, in the favor bank for George, <laughs> like that's not how you operate, right? Yeah. No. And so if, if you were able to eliminate that story with something new, like, wow, if I ask, I can help more people in this business coaching world, because lots of them are spending lots of money with little results, right? And so if we replace that and you get into it, can you think of one person that you'd like to ask for something and what would you ask for? Yeah. And you don't need to name them live just right. because it's, it's your show, but yeah, like yeah. right away yeah, I yeah. saw the light bulb go off. Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. And so then, the most important thing in asking is we were never taught how to be specific. So we say things from like a lower brain of, I'd like more help, I'd like more support. I don't know what to ask for. But when we get in and you have so many strategic alliances and you're like, you know, let's use Tad Hardgay for a second. And he's a low hanging fruit. Like, hey Tad, will you share my next offer 
in an article that I've written to your community. Now, how does that feel? Yeah. And, and it's a, I like that uh, because it means getting to know the other person uh, well enough so that you can see where the, well, like you said, the low hanging fruit is, where is the easier win? Right. You know, it's not like I'm asking, Hey, Tad, will you go knock on 10 neighbors doors and tell them about my own, you know, Right. right, right. You're, you're not asking for them to stretch. You're asking to get into the flow of what they're already doing. So yeah. for you personally, strategic alliances are huge and they're the number one way to build your business quicker. Yet people that don't like to be visible and don't like to ask can't get there. Right. So if we take you for an example, old way of thinking, if I ask this person, I'm going to, oh, not asking new way of thinking. Who do I know now? I'm going to call you out for a moment and say, you could ask Paul Zelzer, you could ask Mark Silver, you could ask me, you could probably ask anyone in MasterHeart, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And as opposed to like, well, now I can ask everyone, you just want to watch that pendulum just because you can ask doesn't mean you over ask, right? Right, sure, sure. sure. But for you, the stretch would be asking without feeling like you owe. Yeah, yeah. nice. Nice. That's a, that's a nice uh, reframe, you know, that I'm going to be working with. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So, okay. So besides asking, right. Now, one of the things, I mean, in, in, uh, in our conversation uh, before this, you have also been learning about experimentation and the power mm. of that. Talk about that. What's, what does that mean? For you? It's similar. Uh, like there's a, a thread that's connected to the last conversation. And that is we don't want to be visible because we might fail or we might succeed. Mm -hmm. And so we get stuck in the thought process of maybe this will work. Maybe that'll work. I don't, you know, and there's so much energy in the thought rather than the movement. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in Chinese medicine, I'm originally an acupuncturist thought follows chi. Mm -hmm. So if you can have the thought and then you're like, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. And then I'm going to learn something. And if you can get curious about it, you're going to bring that childhood fun of like, not knowing when you go to the park, what are you going to do first? It's like showing up, trying it out and then learning from it. So perfect example, George, when I met you, I, I started learning experiment more. That was kind of a phrase that I started taking on because I see you do that a lot. Yeah. And I tried chocolate strategy sessions. And with the chocolate strategy sessions, I probably did a hundred chocolate strategy sessions. So I, for 30 minutes of business expertise, person gave me their favorite chocolate if they found the session helpful. And I ate my weight in chocolate several times over and it didn't convert, it converted one client out of a hundred chocolate. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't like one chocolate bar. Somebody sent me like a shopping cart of chocolate. So it just kept coming and coming and coming. And it's still fun and I like to do it as fun. But I realized through the experimentation, it wasn't a good strategy to think about converting business right away. I, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that very much. Yeah. Um, and so that brings us to another lesson that you mentioned, which is that profitability matters. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So what does that mean for you? Well, you know, it's funny because I worked at Heart of Business and originally before every act of business can be an act of love, Heart of Business was when you want to make a difference and you need to make a profit. And I just believe that oftentimes in the creative business environment, or if you're a wellness practitioner, it's like you think profit is something else. And so ultimately you struggle mm. and you get into business to help people, but you have to be profitable to stick around. Otherwise you have to go get a job or you have yeah. to do something else. Right. And so if you can have a healthier relationship with profitability, everything gets easier because money matters, right? Yeah. And your relationship to money matters. Right. Um, so, Really, when you're in business, I think that you often have two types of coaches. There's the coaches like, make more money now, more money, more money, more money, more money. And you have heart center coaches. Don't worry about the money. The money will come. Do what you love. The money will come. And I think 
the middle road is the best. Yeah. Do what you love, use solid strategies and really focus on making money as one of your objectives for your business. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, like you said, uh, PRI, right? Profit, profit, relationships, and impact. I you like got that. it. You yeah, got it. Yeah. So it's easy to remember. Um, so Jason, let's, uh, let's talk about what you are offering folks now, nowadays. Of course, you've got the one-on-one coaching. Yeah, I got one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have group coaching. But what I've been loving is one-page marketing plans. One-page marketing plans. Let's talk about that. Oh, yes. yeah. So one-page marketing plans. I find the business owners that, that I work with often have taken lots of training and they have lots of different information. But again, chi. Chi is like focus, right? And if we're scattered of like doing this over here and that over there, we get overwhelmed and we're not consistent with anything. And if there's one thing I've learned from you, George, is just show up, like keep showing up. <laughs> and just by keep showing up, if you can simplify showing up, whether it's not doing your email once a month, but you know, do it once every two weeks rather than once every like five months and then once a month and then weekly and then every two weeks. And like, if you can be consistent, you're going to see some huge shifts and one page marketing plans boils down. Who is your tribe? How are you helping them? Who are your niche partners or your marketing mates? How can you get into more visibility and how can you just share in a way that's organic rather than trying to push the river or hiding out, right? Making it really super simple. And within an hour, I have the ability of focusing in on someone's target market, who they are, what the strategies could be, and then we boil it down to daily, weekly, bi-monthly, monthly, and quarterly on a one-page plan. Sweet. That sounds so useful. So I will be sure to put a link in the notes of this video for those of you who are looking for it. It's, well, just go to jasonstein.com. And, and you'll be able to find it there. But I'll, I'll put the link to exactly the one-page marketing plan. Thank you. There. So, um, yeah, Jason, thanks for doing this. Uh, as we close off, any you know, final words of wisdom or encouragement to share with folks? Sure. Um, I have a couple words of wisdom. One is uh, I love Winston Churchill's never, never, never give up. And so if you're beating your head against the wall with your business, it's it may just be some fine tuning for it to take off. So don't quit. Don't quit. Um, and the second piece is stop doing it alone. Like if you're reading everyone's free newsletter and you're getting free stuff all the time and you have more PDFs than you know what to do, find a mentor like George, me, anyone else that can walk you through in a group format or in a one-on-one -on -one format so that you're not alone, right? Find your community and you will thrive. That is awesome. I regularly refer people to you, Jason. I have full, full trust. So um, yeah, if anybody watching this, you know, you, you are aligning with Jason, uh, Jason's wisdom and his, and his presence, reach out to him. Do the one-page marketing plan. That's a great deal. Um, and it's clarifying and, and you, that, that may be all you need or you might decide you want to continue working with Jason. It's up to you. So. Um, thanks, Jason. Thanks for doing this. And um, just looking forward to your continued, you know, growth and, mm -hmm. and contributions in, in our space. Thanks for having me, George. Thanks.